welcome to the Smart Family Fluent Presence. Today, it's my privilege to walk you through our SACP 26 and 27 A-SP Industrial Rental Air Conditioning Unit with heat. Before we get started doing our walkthrough video, we want to go through safety. Our job only starts and ends with safety. First, let's go through personal protective equipment. Our minimum requirements here is hard hat, safety glasses, approved gloves for the job that you are doing, and steel toed shoes. Please adhere to our requirements, the job site, your customers, or your companies, whichever is the most stringent. Second item for safety, our unit is provided with the unit circuit breaker. However, you are responsible for upstream disconnect or electrical protection. That could be an eyeline distribution panel circuit breaker. It could be the circuit breaker on a generator or it could be the circuit breaker in a customer MCC. However, that means a disconnect. Electrical protection is your responsibility. Third item on safety is if you are going to be working on air conditioning equipment, you need to be properly trained and authorized to do so. Okay, now that we're ready to get started, there's typically five steps anytime we're walking through a smart family SACP air conditioning unit. So let's go through the five steps. First, step number one. When you receive a unit, you want to do a full walkthrough around the package. Look for damage. If you see any damage, immediately call your local branch and let them know so that you don't get charged for that damage. Step number two, follow me around the machine. For an air conditioning unit, it's critical that our inlet connections, our returns, and our outlet connections, our supplies, are open. So I'm going to go through and open these connections. This particular model has a quantity two nominal 20 inch inlets. Under most conditions, you're going to want both to be open because you don't want to starve the machine. This particular model has two supplies or outlets. You can run one or two depending upon the job site requirements. Okay, so step number two, I've made sure our supply and our return connections are open. For step number three, I want to inspect the filters. You can typically see the filters when you look in the inlet air section of the machine. As you can see, our filters are nice, clean, dry, they're good to go. At Smart Family, we always start with a washable polyester media in the unit. So that's typically what you receive right off the cuff. Another way to check your filters is to open your filter door. This particular panel actually tells me what filters are located here. You can inspect and pull out your filters from this end. The fourth step, when starting up an SACP unit, we're going to inspect the drain pan. All of the SACP air conditioning unit line has direct drive blowers. Most of them high or medium static. So that means there's going to be a lot of suction on the inlet airstream side. We want to make sure nobody's thrown anything in that drain pan that could get sucked up into our blower. This particular unit, there's not a whole lot of space. It looks good and clean into the inlet of the blower. We can go ahead and close up this panel. Come with me to the front of the unit. Step number five, we're going to go through our walkthrough and start up the machine. This was an, is, is very important. Again, we want to make sure we're trained and authorized if we're going to be working on this gear. Okay. First thing we do when we're ready to start the machine is we turn the unit disconnect to the on position. All smart family gear is provided with a phase monitor. The phase monitor is in the 480 volt panel. There's typically a startup delay. 15 to 20 seconds on that phase monitor. When you go to start up a unit, even if phasing is correct during the startup delay, the light here will read incorrect power. When our phase is correct, control power light will come on. 
there's other reasons why the phase monitor could trip and give us an incorrect power light. The device in the machine is, is fairly complex. It will read over and under volt, voltage and imbalance, as well as phase rotation. So make sure that the power that you're putting into the unit is correct. It might not just be rotation. Okay, in this case, our rotation is good. We know that because our control power light came on. Now, the startup procedure for this particular machine is very, very simple. The only thing we need to do is decide if we're going to be running cooling or heating or if we want to run dehumidification. For the purposes of this video, I'm just running cooling or heating. All I have to do to start this machine is put the airflow switch to the on position. There's a very short startup delay for the blower and then the blower will come on. You can actually hear the blower running in the background. Unlike some of our competitors here, this is a direct drive blower with considerable static. We have lots of force behind the air. This particular model has two cooling stages and two compressors. There are time delays on those compressors. After the time delay is achieved, then our cooling stages should come up. So now we wait for that time to Under normal circumstances, first compressor should come on in one minute, second compressor should come on in about two minutes. So don't be worried if you're waiting for one to two minutes for your compressor to start. We came to that time delay, came to our one minute, and then we heard compressor one to start up. It's typical and not always required that the condenser fans are certainly going to come on. Our condenser fans are discharge pressure fan cycle control, so the fan doesn't always have to be on. In some cases, the lower ambient Pressure might be running, and that's when it might be off. Well, the pressure one started up. There's our two minute time delay for compressor two. Compressor our cooling stage two main. So now the unit in cooling mode is fully operational. In heating mode, the purpose is the same. We're running it in heating because two independent identical stages of electric heat, they both come on with their time delay. What makes this particular unit really unique is you can run the cooling and heating manually or through the onboard stat control. It's a very, very nice feature. So very quickly, I'm going to walk you to the control panel and we're going to see how the stat works and what information we can draw from the stat. I'm going to focus on the stat here. The stat will normally read return air temperature. If I arrow to the right, it will give me our supply air temperature. And we've also installed a humidity sensor on this so you can know the relative humidity of the air coming out of the machine. So to recap, anytime we're going to do a startup procedure on an SAC steps. Number one, walk around the unit and inspect for damage. Number two, check your hose or duct connections. Make sure the appropriate amount of return and supplies are open. Number three, inspect those filters. Make sure they're good and clean and ready to run. Step number four, inspect the drain fan and make sure that nothing's clogged, nothing's in there that can get sucked into the blower. If you don't want the condensate running on the floor where you're at, make sure you hook up your condensate line at that time as well. Step number five, we go through the startup process. In this case, all we need to do on this one is determine if we're running heating or cooling, or if we want dehumidification mode, and turn the airflow switch from off to on. Thank you very much for watching this preliminary startup video for an SACP 26 a-SB, please stay safe out there.